everyone and welcome to another video. Today I've put together my personal top 10 hardest Elden Ring bosses. So please note that this is just my opinion and not meant to be presented as fact. Number 10, Margit the Fell Omen. Margit is the first official boss you face in the Lands Between. As many know, this is him in his first persona, known as Margit the Fell Omen. He reappears much later in the game after reaching the capital and goes by Morgoth, the Omen King. Morgoth is the actual rune bearer, whereas Margit is not, meaning you do not receive a great rune after defeating Margit, but you do after defeating Morgoth. Margit was extremely tough for me. I'd never played a FromSoft game before Elden Ring, so I was still very much learning the style of the game, the combat, as well as the sheer difficulty. It took me 17 tries to finally bring down the infamous Fell Omen, which is why he landed on my number 10 spot. His alter ego, on the other hand, I killed him first try. Number 9, Godric the Grafted. Godric is the first rune bearer you battle if you follow the main progression of the game, and honestly, I didn't find him too difficult. In the first half. Godric's moves in the first half of the fight can easily be dodged, or you could even summon Nefeli Lu for this fight and allow her to tank most of the damage, which she is able to do pretty successfully. That is until the second phase. In a dramatic cinematic that we've all probably seen, Godric chops off his own arm and then grafts the dead dragon's head into its place. The addition of fire attacks that are extremely tough to dodge properly are what made this boss battle so infuriating for me. I had to change my strategy of allowing Nefeli to tank the first half so that she could survive the second half long enough to pull his aggro, allowing me to finally defeat him, which was a pain. Number 8, Draconic Tree Sentinel. This boss is infuriating now simply because I have since learned that he can be completely avoided by taking the magical coffin to the seat of Godwin and defeating Fia's champions. I did not have as much trouble with them as I did this boss, however I will note I only found that area much later into the game so I was probably over leveled for that particular fight. But back to the draconic tree sentinel. It took me many tries to get that timing correct so that I could successfully dodge his lightning attack, but then when you add in the chain stun shield attack, man was I at it for a while with this guy. It felt like forever to get past him, and when I finally did, by sheer dumb luck I'd like to add, it didn't even feel satisfying, which made it so much worse. If you are enjoying this video, please don't forget to hit the like button down below, and if you wanted to see more from me, please consider subscribing to my channel right now. Thank you to everyone who has already subscribed. Now let's get back to the list. Number 7, Estelle Star of Darkness. The difficulty jump between this boss and the last boss on this list is an extremely large one, I know, but to be honest, I didn't actually struggle with any of the bosses in the capital itself, which is partly why the Draconic Tree Sentinel was so aggravating. Estelle Star of Darkness is actually the second iteration of this boss. You can find it in the consecrated snow fields just before making your way to the Halleck Tree. Honestly, all bosses found on this particular route are extremely hard, and for a reason. But my reason for putting Estelle Star of Darkness on this list is because of how much harder it was defeating them in comparison to their first form. I beat Estelle Natural Born of the Void on my first try, but this one? It took me over 25 tries to defeat Estelle Star of Darkness. Specifically, I was having a hard time understanding the duplication move it does further into the fight because the camera during this boss fight had no idea where it wanted to be. I couldn't exactly understand what was happening until I realized it was creating multiple illusions that were trying to bite me and would one-shot kill me in their jaws, which was extremely well-balanced in my opinion. So yeah, not exactly my favorite fight, but definitely harder than the first one, which is why Estelle Star of Darkness landed number 7 on my list. Number 6, Elamir of the Briar. 
This is the boss at the Shaded Castle, where you find the item needed to continue Millicent's quest, or just by random curiosity like me. I had this tendency to look at an area on the map and think to myself, hmm, I wonder what's over there, better find out. Well, I did find out, and it was one of the worst areas for me personally. I absolutely hated everything about this location. From the depraved perfumers burning me to death to the random clean rot nights, this place was obviously cursed, and that included its boss. Elamir of the Briar is an interesting character, as you face him in other locations at night specifically, but this is the only place he appears with the golden boss door. He uses a type of magic with his weapon which allows him to telekinetically slice it through the air multiple times. His background and some of the lore surrounding his magic is indeed very interesting, but you know what's not interesting? is fighting him over and over and over to no avail. This boss was so incredibly difficult for me to the point where I actually ended up taking a break before coming back and trying again. None of my spirit ash summons could survive or keep aggro long enough for me to be able to pull off any of my preferred combos, so I actually ended up resorting back to my bleed build and was finally able to best him. Number 5. Commander Nile. I don't think anyone is going to be surprised by this one. Commander Nile is one of the only bosses that is able to bring summons into the fight with them, besides Fia, but she doesn't actually fight you at the same time, so it is different. This was the first time I had to take use of one of the cheese tactics, which was using a bewitching branch on one of his knights, preferably the one wielding two swords, allowing the two summons to fight each other so that I could focus all my attention on Commander Nile. This strategy also allows you to get in a good amount of damage before Commander Nile starts using his lightning attacks, which are extremely difficult to dodge and deal a ton of damage. Commander Nile's boss battle makes it extremely obvious that the route to the Halleck Tree was so difficult for a reason, in preparation for what's to come. Number 4, Dragon Lore Placidisax. I honestly didn't think this boss was going to be too difficult. I had seen some gameplay footage of the boss battle, and it seemed extremely straightforward to me. What I didn't expect was how incredibly tanky Dragon Lore Placidus Sax would be. It seemed to take so long to get anywhere with chipping away at his health bar. It did take me quite a few tries to figure out that it was best to fight him up close, except during his nuclear bomb style attack of course and I had to try various different armor sets to try and negate as much damage as possible because when he did land a blow, it was almost always devastating. This was also the first fight that I really started utilizing different incantations for a better overall defense. While this boss battle was really difficult and took far too long, it did help me sort out my final gameplay on strategy and build which ultimately helped me defeat the game, so I'm pretty appreciative for it. Number 3. Electo Where do I even begin? I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but by the time I reached the previously inaccessible area above the village of the Albanerics, I had started a personal quest to defeat all of the Everjail bosses. Only one other boss actually gave me any trouble, and that was Godfrey the Grafted, which took a few tries to defeat. That is, besides Electo. Electo is another interesting character who I still have questions about. I even mentioned her and her daughter Tish in my 5 questions I still have for Elden Ring video I recently posted. Despite all that, I had one of the worst times trying to defeat her. After dying to her a few dozen times, I was almost ready to completely give up on finishing the Everjail bosses. That was until I went back so extremely overleveled that I still died a few more times before finally being able to defeat her. Electo just proves that the Black Knife Assassins were not a group that you wanted to mess with. Number 2. Radagon the Elden Beast This is probably very obvious since the Elden Beast is the final boss of the game, so I am here to confirm what nobody has questioned that yes, the final boss is difficult. Mind-numbingly so, in fact. I spent four days straight trying to beat this boss. Radagon himself was no problem for me personally. I was able to defeat him quickly and consistently. 
but the Elden Beast was an entirely different story. Honestly, if it had been in a different sized arena, it probably wouldn't have been as hard as it was, but the fact that you would have to run to one side of the arena just for the beast to submerge and swim across back to the other side was so infuriating. I used Black Knife Tish for most of my boss battles after acquiring her, but man, we were no match for this dumb boss arena. After four long days, I was finally able to best the Elden Beast and finish the game. Number 1. Melania Blade of Mikola. Of course it is. She is the hardest boss I have ever fought in almost any game. She is so fast, so agile, so frustratingly able to heal herself, I genuinely didn't know if I would ever be able to defeat her. If you thought four days was long, you'd be wrong, because Melania took me almost a solid week to finally defeat. I tried armor combination after armor combination, changed my talismans to give me better damage output and then better defense, anything that might be able to tip the scales into my favor. There are two main things that Melania is relatively weak to, and that is fire and ice. Although she might also be weak to blood loss, I can't really remember. <laughs> I tried every combination of fire incantation with fire damage boosts coupled with my blade of night and flame and still got nowhere. Once I discovered you can in fact dodge her dive bomb attack at the beginning of the second phase, I began to consistently be able to get to that second phase. But the problem I was running into was that she would very quickly regain all of her health and I was always put back to square one this time without a full health summon to help me. After a few days of trying some different strategies, I finally gave Ice a true college try, and actually it unironically worked for me. I cannot explain how excited I was to defeat her. She is so brutal and so unforgiving, and I was able to actually beat her. I truly think that that was one of my proudest gamer moments. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked it, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up down below. Let me know who were the hardest bosses for you, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye!